Great Shooting LJA here, and you know what? Welcome to another episode of the Straight Shooting Rant. So you know what? I want to take this football related again because it's kind of football and legal matters. Now, those who don't know football, let me catch you up just a, just a little touch. Basically, Bournemouth got relegated on the final day of the season. Aston Villa stayed up by a point. But there was controversy during the fir- during literally the first game of Project Restart, um, as it was called, with football coming back after the COVID-19 lockdown. And the controversy was that basically there is, there is something called goal line technology, um, Hawkeye specifically, where if the ball crosses the line, a signal, a signal is sent to the referee who's wearing a watch. So if you watch football, you'll see referees checking their watch every time there's a potential goal line or goal mouth decision. Um, so basically, yeah, the short version of it is that Hawkeye at that point actually failed. And the match ended up a 0-0 draw, Aston Villa v Sheffield United. But that only tells half the story because a few games later, final day of the season, Bournemouth won their final game, but they got relegated because Aston Villa got got a positive result against West Ham. So Villa survived for 35 points and... um, What's it? Um, Bournemouth went down on 34. Coincidentally, Watford went down on 34 as well. But Watford don't really have any sort of claim, in my view, because they lost on the final day of the season. And yeah, it's one of them. So they lost to Arsenal. But for me, I would say that Bournemouth have a legitimate shout here. Because if Hawkeye was working, Aston Villa's goalkeeper, um, Nyland, it was one of them ones where he basically had the ball in his hand, fell back in, fell back into the goal with the ball. Now, you can see, I I look at I look at it and i and I think, and I've seen the footage and I'm like, yeah, that's a goal to me. And there's a lot of angles of it. And they say the angles are not conclusive, but yeah. And then there's the whole thing which is why Hawkeye was brought in in the first place. When you've got decisions of fine margins, like Luis Garcia's ghost goal in 2005, as a Liverpool supporter, it was in. It was in, (laughs) the ghost goal. But when you've got fine margin decisions like that, this is why Hawkeye was actually brought in to sort that out. Because if if the whole ball is over the line, then it's a goal. If not, the goal's ruled out. But because Hawkeye wasn't working, there was, a, there was apparently a malfunction and the referee actually didn't know until half time that the ball had crossed the line. So they had Hawkeye working for the second half of that match. But by then, damage was already done, too late. And I said, the match ended 0-0. Aston Villa got a point and that ended up basically helping them survive because they survived by a single point in the Premier League. Now, we all know that obviously the Premier League is a major cash cow. And Bournemouth, I would say, have got a legal claim. Because oddly enough, actually, it's odd that it was Villa. Because with Project Restart, and see see my previous vlogs about, um, about the Premier League returning, but basically I've always been of the mindset, and obviously there is evidence to prove that If the season had not restarted, then Aston Villa would have had a legitimate claim to legal action because they would because if if the season had ended with the coronavirus lockdown, if it had ended then, then places would have been charged on a points per game system, and Aston Villa would have gone down even though they had a game in hand. So they would have had a legal right to say no we didn't have we didn't have the chance to fight for our Premier League survival we didn't have the same chance as everybody else now this I said little ironic because Villa could be part of a legal battle if Bournemouth decide to go that way at this time at this time 28th of, 28th of July 
2020, Bournemouth, I think, are assessing, apparently they're assessing their options, but they haven't pulled the trigger or, like, I don't think they've talked to any lawyers at this point. But I would say that they need to pursue it because there is somewhat of a precedent, kind of a loose one, but there is kind of a precedent. Back in uh, 2007, there was an issue, <laughs> again, ironically, because it was an Aston Villa-Sheffield United match, but ironically, with Sheffield United, there was actually an issue where West Ham survived in the Premier League at Sheffield United's expense. Neil Warnock can do one, by the way. He still blames Liverpool for it. And it's like, dude, your team will crap over 38 games. Get over it. Be at, well, sound a bit better. But anyway, Sheffield United, and they did actually pursue it legally to get their Premier League status reinstated in 2007 because West Ham were found guilty of having Carlos Tevez and Javier Mascherano who were owned by a third party, I think it's MSI, MSL, something like that. But they were owned, they were basically, their contracts were owned by a third party. And Premier League rules say that you can't use, you can't have players under that type of contract. The club has to own the contract, not a third party owning. So there was, so there was that issue, but it is one of them ones where West Ham were found, they were found guilty of playing, of fielding two ineligible players in Tevez and Mascherano, but they weren't relegated for it. They were, and basically Sheffield United appealed the decision and they ended up with 5.5 million pounds compensation. But considering the money that you won't be earning in the Premier League, I think it's like 50 million or something like that, 5.5 is a slap in the face especially when Tevez and Mascherano made a massive difference, a massive difference in that running. I think Carlos Tevez actually scored on the final day. If memory serves me correctly, Carlos Tevez actually scored on the final day that season to give West Ham a, I think it was a 1-0 win at Old Trafford, which kept them up. And Sheffield United, on the other hand, held, um, what's it, were held to a one-all draw with Wigan. I remember John Stead scoring and getting punched in the head for his troubles. And David Unsworth, if memory serves, got the equaliser. And then he was released about a day or two later from Wigan. But, and Wigan are their own thing. I might do another vlog on that because <laughs> there's a situation with them um, at the moment. But it's one of them ones where, so there is somewhat of a precedent with clubs suing to try or taking legal action to try and keep their Premier League status. Now, Bournemouth, I think, have more of a case than Sheffield United did. And Sheffield United did have a case. Don't get me wrong. They did have a case there. Because as I said, Carlos Tevez especially made a major difference. But it was one of them ones where with Bournemouth, if you look at that point that Aston, that Aston Villa got against Sheffield United, you could actually argue that that was the point that they survived with, even though on the final day they got a positive result. But if they, like, let's, let, me, let me put it this way. If that goal had been allowed, if that goal had stood, let's say hypothetically, if the goal had stood, then Villa wouldn't have gotten that point and they would have gotten dragged, they would have gotten dragged into the, releg into the relegation zone. And Bournemouth, remember, they won on the final day. So really and truly, I think that actually would have kept Bournemouth up. So there's a major potential legal crap storm coming for, Ast for Aston Villa, and it's not their fault. It's, Haw it's Hawkeye, because Hawkeye had the malfunction, but it's one of them ones where the Premier League are going to have potentially a decision to make. And it might not be, it might be taken out of their hands and it might be made by the courts. As mentioned, Wigan, same thing earlier, championship. Uh, but that's a situation unto itself as well. So if Bournemouth were to take it that way, they've got a cast iron case in my view. But it is going to be very interesting to see if they do 
take it that way. And I said, there is kind of a precedent. Loose albeit, but there is kind of a precedent for it. But you know what, yeah? I wanna know what you guys think. I'm gonna keep this somewhat short and sweet. I wanna know what you guys think. Comment section is below. I am Straight Shooting LJA. And on the Straight Shooting Ranch, I'll see you guys next time.